So this is what it looks like. This is what happens to your yard when wild pigs show up in the middle of a storm. <laughs> it is a mess. friends welcome back to a good life farm um so this video is going up on tuesday i didn't do a video on monday like i usually do it has just been a really it was a really long week last week um in case you missed it uh we had an invasion of wild pigs and it's been an ordeal uh, I mentioned in one of the videos, there's two videos where I talked about this whole crazy thing. Um, in one of the videos, I talked about how I was a little grateful that they showed up here because it gave us the opportunity to kind of address the situation and maybe help out some farmers um, by having less pigs <laughs> that could terrorize their, their farm fields. Um, and 
I, I still hold to that, but it doesn't... Just because we have the ability to sort of deal with it a little bit doesn't make it easy. Um, it's still a lot of work. It's still physically and emotionally draining, to be quite honest. Um, and last night, my son, who lives here in our area, uh, he and his wife and the baby were over and came over for dinner and noticed that Sophie and Amos were staring at the woods and sure enough there was some pigs back there um, so he grabbed a rifle headed out to try and dispatch one and he missed he wanted to make sure that he had actually missed and not injured it or anything like that um, I mean because it was it was really far away so he went out there uh, took a flashlight, was looking around, looking for any trace of anything when he heard a whole crazy ruckus and he thought maybe it was an injured pig so he headed into the woods. Um, it wasn't an injured pig making a ruckus. It was somewhere between 12 and 20 more pigs loose running through the woods. Um, I mean, we knew there was more out there because that night where we saw the second round of them, um, there was at least 70 up here along the side that we, or 70, oh gosh, no, seven <laughs> along the side that we could count, but I could see movement uh, on the far side of the woods uh, and I could tell that there was a lot more there. I just couldn't see individual pigs. I could just see movement. Um, so it's just been, it's been an ordeal, you know, almost every night we have pigs out here. Um, almost every morning we wake up to more of the yard destroyed. Um, and I, it does make me grateful that I'm not gardening this year because now my garden areas are fenced and we have hot wires and all that stuff to keep animals out, but it's just, it's draining and you know I love to garden but it does exhaust me sometimes and it's like an all-day thing for me and so yeah I am kind of relieved that I don't have a garden this summer this spring um, to be working on while dealing with this um, I've had a lot of people suggest having um, Persons come out who are trained to do this, like to deal with this. Um, to be honest, I'm we're just not keen on strangers coming out here to our property. Uh, you know, we have too many animals on all different parts of our property. We wouldn't want to risk someone who's not as careful as we are, um, and and risk one of our animals being hurt. So that that's one of the reasons that we are doing our best to handle this ourselves. You know, anytime we do dispatch uh, one of the pigs, you know, we reach out to all of the people that we know who have said that they want them. Um, there's some other people who we don't actually know personally, but who have said that they want a pig if we get one. Um, and so we try to make sure that at any point possible, those pigs are being used by people who want them and want to put them to put them in the freezer, so to speak. Uh, freezer camp. <laughs> That's what we generally call that. Um, but yeah. Um, what else? Oh, so a couple times now there has been a black cat with a fluffy tail that you have seen in the background of some of my videos or, or, or I think two incidents so far and I realize I have never shared the story of this particular cat so my son worked as an auto tech and one day he was going to work and he had just just gotten to work when he saw a car stop open their door close and take off and there was a teeny tiny little black kitten now he doesn't know if the person dumped the kitten or if they just stopped to look at the kitten or what the situation was, but they took off. And my son, being my son, 
rescued the kitten. And um, we took him to the vet, got him all fixed up, shots, all the stuff. He was teeny tiny, maybe like five weeks old or something like that. And, um, but he ended up with the name Otto because he was by the auto department of the store at the time. Um, but we spell it O-T-T-O because I'm not given anything the name Otto like automobile. Well, my son and daughter-in-law took him to their home and they have had him there because they thought they were allowed to have pets. And then they realized after a bit that, oh, we're not allowed to have pets here. And so Otto is now at our house, at least for now, until they are able to um, move. They are wanting to buy their own place and all of that. So fingers crossed that that's actually able to happen. Uh, because in the meantime, Otto is at our house and our cat, Ava, our tortoise shell, is none too happy about the entire situation. Um, he wants to play. She does not. Oh, and Mr. Smith is carrying some boxes in here for me. I have been collecting boxes for using in the garden beds. They are great weed barrier and also break down into compost for the worms and everything else. And so as I'm getting boxes, I'm just bringing them in here until we're ready to use them. And it's supposed to rain tonight, so they definitely gotta get put away. Oh, and I also wanted to mention, a lot of people suggested that we take the pigs to a butcher. Now I gotta sneeze. Um, take the pigs to a butcher and then donate the meat. Um, we don't know of any butchers who will butcher a pig pro bono. And quite frankly, it is really expensive to have, a, uh, to have anything butchered at this point. And that is just not an expense that we are ready to incur. incur. Um, I mean, if there was some kind of charity that would foot the bill, then maybe, but that, that's, as much as I would love to do that, it's just not, it's just not possible for us. Um, the best that we can do is let people take them that want them and then they can, they can handle that themselves. They can either butcher them themselves or they can have them done. Um, but there is just, I mean, like I said, there's, there's something like at least 30 pigs out here. And I mean, you're talking multiply that times 300 <laughs> and that, that might be a gentle estimate on what it would cost to have all of those pigs done and donated. Um, it's just not, not in the realm of possibility. I mean, we make ends meet and I can be generous about things, but we have our limits <laughs> on what we're able to do and that's just not possible. But that said, I am quite frankly so tired of talking about pigs. I'm tired of dealing with pigs. I would be happy to never see another one. Um, so I don't plan on talking about pigs in any more videos anytime in the near, in the near future. <laughs> it's just, it is draining honestly. Um, but like I said, I, I am glad that we can at least keep some of them from, from some farmer's crop fields and reduce the chances of the damage. So as I was saying before, Mr. Smith came up here with the, bo with the boxes. Um, we, we have auto for the time being and we do our very best to um, keep him and Miss Ava from fighting. Uh, we have to run referee between the two of them a lot, especially in the morning, because in the morning he is extra spunky <laughs> and he wants to play and she does not. So that's where that black cat came from and who he is and all of that. 
Uh, we, we don't intend to, for him to stay here forever. He is our son and daughter-in-law's cat, um, but again, they aren't able to have him at their place, so he's with us for the time being. Uh, this week, what do I have planned? Um, I have some deadlines coming up for the magazine that I write for, uh, as well as a couple other things I'm working on. Um, I do plan on doing a little bit of canning this week. I, I have a taco meat recipe that I've been meaning to do, and I just have not had the time to do it. And so I am going to buckle down and do that this week, and I will share that with all of you. Um, yeah, so that's all I can think of off the top of my head. It's just been a, it's just been a, it's been a long week, and uh, real life here on the homestead, if you know what I mean. Um, but anyways, uh, earlier today I was doing a little bit of ironing. You know, I mentioned how I really enjoy wearing linen, even though it's not something that I've had a lot of over the years. And someone commented that I must like iron ironing, and actually I do. It is my favorite chore. I find ironing very relaxing. Um, and when I start ironing, I will often go and look for other things <laughs> to iron. Dinner tonight is a very easy, um, beef and barley stew. Uh, it's very, very simple, just a few ingredients, um, some beef stew meat, onion, garlic, a little bit of red wine, some beef broth, salt and pepper, bay leaves. I let that cook for an hour, hour and a half to really tenderize the meat. Then I add in some carrots and some barley and pull out the bay leaves maybe thicken the broth if I feel like doing that, and that is it. It's super simple. I don't think it's a recipe that I actually have on my website, but um, that's pretty much it. So with that, thanks for hanging out with me here in the greenhouse. My name is Constance at A Good Life Farm, and I'll talk to y'all next time.